Hello everybody, this is a Shadowbox, and welcome to Flight Simulator 10 once again. We are back in FS Passengers, if you couldn't tell by this little blue screen, and it is FS Passengers Season 2. Now, why are we in Season 2 instead of in Season 1? Well, that is because the hard drive that I use for FSX crashed on me and I had to reinstall everything on a new hard drive, so yay, technology. Um, and as you can see... They're at Manchester Airport. This is the UK 2000 uh, Manchester Airport. And we were in Manchester because I remember I promised that uh, we will be, that we would be flying in Europe for the uh, second season of FS Passengers. So here we are. And we are flying the A2A uh, Piper Cherokee as our first aircraft. <laughs> Once we get these passengers loaded, we'll go ahead and start our start procedures. We're not going to use the tug to push back, just because that's ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, and uh, where are we flying to today? We are flying to um, the Isle of Man. Yeah, it's an interesting place to fly to, so we're going to try it. Whoa there, buddy. That's my wing you almost took off. Alright, so we've got our passengers on board. Let's go ahead and... Sorry, I have my keyboard's on the left, so... That's why I'm looking to the left. Alright. Plane weight and balance is checked. Cabin door is locked. Control wheel lock is removed. Controls are... Free and correct. Mission and avionics off. Master switch on. Fuel quantity is good. Fuel selector will go left tank first. Flaps extend. They've been extended for the walk around. Retract. Elevator trim should be neutral. Beacon on. Brakes are on, carburetor heat is off, fuel selector is still on the fullest tank, master switch is still on, three pumps of the primer, well first we have to test the fuel pump, fuel pump's working, then three pumps of the primer, one, two, three, set that mixture to rich, throttle cracked, area clear, Ignition both, and start. There we go. Oh. Oil pressure looks a bit... Oh, that's the fuel pressure. Oil pressure looks good. Oil temperature, surprisingly, is already good. Wow, must be a hot day in the UK today. Jeez, 156 Fahrenheit. Wow, that's uncharacteristic. Okay. Oh, sorry, track I are freaking out because I'm moving around in my chair. Let me reset. Okay. Let's get our radios on. Flip on that seatbelt sign. Let's talk to ground. We're departing to the west, I suppose. Pull out my rudder pedals. do that. I always accidentally differential brake with my, uh, with my rudder pedal. And I forgot to turn AI traffic on. Ugh. Darn it.
Oh, this is an absolutely awesome airport. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And it does have some static aircraft, so it doesn't feel quite so empty. Is my side window still open? Yes, it is. Let's close that up. Let's also... Whoops. Let's pop on the defroster and vent. Can't wait till we can fly one of those. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot of new aircraft to show you this season. And how long is this season going to go? This season is going to go until Air Hauler 2 comes out. And then we will have Air Hauler Season 2 with Air Hauler 2. Because, oh my god, Air Hauler 2 looks amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, search for it. It's freaking amazing. Seriously. But we don't... The Just Flight Facebook page says we're not looking at a release date anytime soon, so that's why I decided to go ahead and start FS Passengers Season 2. But yeah, basically, Air Hauler 2 is going to combine... <laughs> basically combine FS Passengers and Air Hauler, so you can fly either wherever you want, like in FS Passengers, uh, with passengers like in FS Passengers, or take specific missions like an air hauler, or fly cargo like an air hauler, and they're adding the ability to have your own virtual airline for, as far as I'm aware, no extra cost. So what I'm thinking about doing is when Air Hauler 2 comes out, I'll start an A Shadow Box Air for all of you guys to fly with me. I don't think it'll be, you know, it'll be like a virtual airline where you're flying in single player and then you'll submit your report to the company and that'll affect company funds and company aircraft and oh it's gonna be sweet guys it's gonna be absolutely sweet let me go ahead and pause track IR real quick cause I'm moving around again I probably just keep track IR paused unless I need it cause I just I can't find a comfortable position to sit today one of those days I guess Center. <laughs> hey, look, there's Concord. Hi, Concord. Everyone, wave to the Concord. It's cliche, but that is my favorite plane ever. Oh. Favorite civilian plane ever. Long taxiway, though. So, anyone who lives in the Manchester area watching this, uh, is this airport like? I mean, I assume it's it's uh, very closely resembles the real thing, but does it really? Oh, but also, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I have a lot of new aircraft to show you guys. First of all, this one. 
And then our twin engine piston plane, so our next plane, is going to be the Real Air Duke B60, which I have not flown yet. I bought it just for the series. Followed by that will be turboprops, and I've got a couple of different choices for that. Turn! Rudder pedals are sliding, because I'm on carpet. Oh my goodness, that is like the most annoying thing about rudder pedals. And I don't have anything to brace them against either. Alright, so let's call up Manchester Tower. Make sure everything's set for takeoff. There we go. So the autopilot in this plane is very, very simple. Like the, the altitude hold isn't really an altitude hold. It just beeps at you when your trim is wrong. <laughs> down, we want to be climbing at around like 90 knots-ish. check IR. Track the flaps. So my nose just wants to shoot up. down trim going some more.
really have aileron trim because the plane keeps wanting to roll to the left. Let's see? It's probably because of the prop torque. Still. That's what trim is for. Okay, so. New planes that I've gotten since last season. Let's see if we can get through the list this time. This plane. Uh, the Duke, or sorry, the Real Air Beechcraft uh, Duke B60. I also have the Aerosoft Twin Otter X. I mean, I've had that for a while, but it's the. Uh, I was going to list off planes we didn't use. Airsoft Twin Otter X, um, Majestic Dash 8 Q400, uh, Carinado, uh Beechcraft B200 King Air, uh, Quality Wings BAE Series, Airsoft Airbus X Extended, and Airsoft A318, A319. Seven thirty seven and GX. Oh. Just flight DC eight, uh, the ten to forty version, I think. So we want to level off at around 4,500 feet. And there goes the nose, dropping all at once. Trim up now. We're actually stable, level, everything's good. Looks like it. Got our passengers in the back there. Beautiful evening to be flying, too. The cloud cover is pretty. Without being a nuisance. <laughs> I love how you just see that like hugely detailed area of Manchester Airport and then just boom. Default scenery. Not that this looks particularly bad. Alright guys, well, in FS Passenger Series fashion, I will be pausing the video here, and I will see you guys when it's time to set up for the approach. Alright everybody, as you can see, the Isle of Man is 
directly ahead. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get them on the radio. Alright, so we got right traffic for runway 8. Let's pull back on the throttle a little bit and let the nose drop. We'll turn off the altitude alert for the autopilot. So we want to start descending. Control our descent with the throttle as much as we can. Might have to give it a touch to trim up, though, just so uh, we don't overspeed the plane. That would ruin our flight pretty quickly. So the opposite of 280 is going to be 250, but we still want to continue towards the island, so let's set a he heading hold of about 290. It's just a slight change, but it will make a difference. As you can see, it is well and truly evening now as well. We've been in the air for about half an hour or so. Yeah, I still have to check IR pause just because I'm still trying to find a comfortable position for my rudder pedal and everything. So, are you guys excited for FS Passenger Season 2? I know I am. It's good to be back in the air again. And I'm glad that we're doing this because it's giving me a lot more flight time with my uh, yoke and rudder pedals. Oh. And I'm interested to see some parts of Europe. I think I'm going to try to keep it in like the UK, Ireland area until we get to a twin engine plane. And then once we get a twin engine plane, we'll go ahead and cross the channel. For our next flight, we might hop over to Ireland. I don't know. You guys tell me where you want me to fly. We gotta start from the Isle of Man. Where should I fly from here with a single engine prop plane that's in the uh, Ireland or United Kingdom area? And yes, I can already hear the people saying, Fly Innsbruck! I can't even pronounce it right. But that place in Austria that's really, really hard to fly in and out of. Yes, we will be flying there. Not with this plane. Probably with our next one.
So that was me turning track IR back on. Zoom our view out a little bit. Down to about 2,500 feet. It's good, we need some kind of light. Um, let's go ahead and. Oh, I never turned off the fuel pump. That. <laughs> Oops. Switch over to our fullest tank, which is the right tank. That could also be why the plane was leaning to the left, because we were drawing fuel out of the left tank. That's the one thing I don't like about this plane, is it doesn't have a fuel crossfeed. The 172 does. Is this sun visor full down? It's A2A, so probably. Because it does. That doesn't really do much good for me, but... Cool. Did you say eight right? Not just eight, okay. Oh, we never plugged our headphones in. I'm sure, our pilot's got a major headache now. Just wanted them on dim, just because. Let's go ahead and start trimming the plane up again. I love this cockpit's lighting, by the way. And yes, it is a cockpit, not a flight deck. This is not a liner of any kind. One person in the front, it is a cockpit. I don't know if that's actually fact, that's just what I'm calling it, because I refuse to call a Cherokee cockpit a flight deck. Frugal, of course, mentioned in his Airbus video that it's not called, in his uh, latest Airbus, in uh, his Airbus series, let me start that like, over again, Oh, tongue-tied, my apologies, Frugal said in his uh, last Airbus fully loaded vehicle that it is not a cockpit, it is a flight deck. Well, I just have trouble calling something like this a flight deck, so I'm going to call it a cockpit. Once we get to bigger planes, I will gladly call it a flight deck. So you can save your comments for later, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, no. Tell me, do you call it a cockpit or a flight deck? Let's go ahead and throttle back and stick in the first notch of flaps.
pull back to compensate. Oops, sorry, moving around again. Surely pause track IR before I do that. Oh, it just stuck my head clear through the windshield. I should probably assign my track IR pause button to, like, a yoke button. It'd be easy. I've got it assigned to my keyboard right now. Trim up some more. There's the airport. Pause. Uh, major moving around. And we're cleared for landing. Um. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just flip off the autopilot now. Sorry, I'm not going to be very talkative now because I'm focusing on trying to get everything right to a certain extent. I'm still not that great with manual flying with the yoke. really takes me two hands to control the yoke, so when I have to take one off to adjust the throttle, my flying tends to get a bit sloppy. And this is also the first night la nighttime landing I've done, so...
All right, here we go. I wonder why the landing lights aren't illuminating the ground. What the heck, this is an A2A plane, I expect better. I do have the landing lights on, right? Yeah. Alpha See? Sierra, Alpha two deep, exit runway when able. Why are the landing lights not on? What the heck? I'll have to take a look at that in the aircraft hangar. Maybe they failed. Maybe there's an electrical short? I don't know. Alpha Sierra, Alpha 2 deep. Turn next taxiway. But yeah, not seeing the taxiway is going to get annoying. There we go. Thank you for telling me the taxiways. I appreciate that. I'm still really confused why the landing lights aren't working. I don't know, but that was a, overall a good flight. Touchdown wasn't the best, but well, it also wasn't the worst. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys the FS passenger screens anymore because instead of using Shadowplay, I'm using Bandicam now. 
I get better performance with uh, Bandicam than with DX Tori, and Shadowplay has been giving me um, Shadowplay's been giving me problems lately because honestly, it's still still a beta program, so of course it's going to have its bugs. You know, honestly, I didn't expect the Isle of Man to have such a large airport. I certainly didn't expect it to be controlled, let alone have two ILS approaches. Um, I definitely thought it was going to be something more like we would see at uh, Putin Bay in Ohio, you know, just like a small, uncontrolled strip. Maybe, a, you know, maybe two runways. We did not use very much fuel from our right tank, like at all. <laughs> Overall, I really do like this plane a lot. I like the sounds. I like the headphone thing. That's really cool. I like the walk-arounds. I like the maintenance hangar, for sure. It's very detailed, of course. It's an A2A plane. I just wish I could figure out what the problem with that landing lights is, like what the problem is with the landing lights. But yeah, I'm already looking forward to the next plane. That uh, I hear that Real Air Duke B60 is just an incredible plane, and I haven't flown it yet. I'm debating if I should do a Let's Learn on it or if I should just throw it in FS passengers and have fun. Um, let me know if you guys want to see a Let's Learn on it, or if I should just not even bother. Do you guys like the Let's Learn series? I know it's been a while since we've had an upload there. And since I got the yoke, the NGX got delayed indefinitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's not that bad. We're almost to the parking spot. Out by the runway that we touched down on. Now, if you are going to use A2A or other complex aircraft with uh, FS passengers, uh, there is something that you need to know. 
FS passengers will try to load weight onto the plane and if you don't have the right payload model or if uh, like this aircraft there's different algorithms used to calculate the weight it's going to really screw you up so the first time I tried to do this flight I loaded it to FS passengers and my plane just started doing cartwheels on the taxiway like as soon as I started the game just started doing cartwheels what you have to do you have to go into FS passengers and there's an option in there that says disable weight and fuel and that means FS passengers will keep track of how many passengers you have loaded on your plane but it will rely on you to be using the aircraft's uh, software and the aircraft's payload management to load the weight and fuel. FS passengers will only keep track of the profits that you made. It won't actually load the stuff onto the plane for you. Alright, here we are. Let's get that parking brake. Oh, there it is. And shut off the engine. Off with all the lights. Fuel selector off. We'll go to... Gotta hit that key combo. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Deboarding, please. In the mean, until the bus gets here, you guys can just chill out on the taxiway. <laughs> Alright guys, so that is the first flight of FS Passenger Season 2 complete. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, remember to let me know if you think this is a good idea, if I should just wait until Air Hauler 2. Um, and yeah, until next time, I'm A Shadowbox. This has been FSX with the A2A uh, Cherokee. And have a good one, guys.